Hi y'all, Billy here again. Welcome to the Messy Studio. This is part 5B of the So You Want to Turn Pin series. Uh, part 5 in total is turning a pin. We start from the beginning and go all the way through the end of the process and the pin you see here is what we end up with. Okay, it's actually been a little longer than a couple hours. It's the next day. <coughs> I've got the pin mill in my drill press, ready to go. The blanks are ready. It should be noted here that sometimes these are a bit aggressive for some pin blanks, in which case I will use this method. What I have here is a pin mill that's been turned backwards with some sandpaper glued on it and I'll true the blanks up that way. That's It's less aggressive. It takes a little bit longer but you still get the same result and you don't have the chip out that you sometimes get using the other side of the mill. So let's see what this looks like. There's a little bit of epoxy in the tubes but this should clean that out. If you don't feel comfortable holding this by hand, don't do it. You don't want to mill much, you just want to get it to where you see the shine of the brass tube. Like that. and you got the shine of the tube. Now I could put this in my vise. And that would probably be safer. That's really close. So we'll stop there. And I'll show you yet another method for squaring these up that is less aggressive than this. This is a transfer punch set. I got this from Harbor Freight over 10 years ago. If you have to take pins apart to fix them, which once in a while you might have to do, this is invaluable. This is what I use to take all my pins apart. You just find the right size center punch, knock them out, knock their appropriate parts out, and then that lets you put everything back together without damaging anything. Well, you can also do something else with these. Find the right size. that fits perfectly in the hole in this case it's this one put it in a drill chuck That's nice and square now, running to the... I made this, this is a, a platen from an old 12 inch uh, sander that I bought, I don't remember, off of a Craigslist or something. The sander itself went bad. All that was available was this. I took the, the metal part that mounted to the arbor off of it, made my own screwed it to it. This is tapped for these threads. <laughs> I 
run it up so that uh, we get you a little closer here. Run it up so that we're almost touching, not quite. Turn the lathe on, simply slide this down and sand it. If you have 80 or 100 grit sandpaper on here, it doesn't take all that long. And this is a pretty safe method for getting the job done. Nice and flush. That's just another way of doing it. Now let's get to turning. Remember my carpenter's triangle? After I get these turned, these marks will be gone. So I don't have any way of knowing what goes where. So what I will do right now is I will mark. Put those two together. I take a sharpie and I simply put a mark on the inside of the tubes so the inside of these tubes are now colored in a couple of places and when I get through turning I'll know that the colored sides go together that way I keep the integrity of my grain I have mentioned before that I don't use a mandrel I quit doing that years ago. I turn, I turn between centers. This is a dead center. This goes in the headstock. Clean that out. Don't want any trash in there. Same over here. This is a 60 degree live center. take a second to look this over and see which I want on the top and which I want on the bottom doesn't really matter it's a matter of personal preference really and I like to try to put the less prominent features up top where I can maybe not hide it with the clip but cover it with a clip so it's you don't have to worry about losing nice figure in this case this will be my top blank this will be my bottom blank so let's turn the bottom first you can buy bushings especially made for turning between centers <clears throat> I'm not going to make this into a regular slim line if I was going to use a regular slim line I would simply put the bushings in by regular slim line I mean that skinny pin, I don't like skinny pins. Now I'll make one every now and then for customers that request one. And I still make a few here and there, but out of this wood, I don't want to waste any more of this marble wood than I have to. This is my only piece. Like I said, it is stabilized. I could tell that from the smell. But you, you take your blank, put your bushings in it, put it between centers, and turn. Like I said, I'm going to do something a little bit different. That's my colored end. So that's going to be in the middle. I found a couple of washers that are a little bit bigger than the, the bushings, but the holes are perfect. And this washer will be at the center, which is where my marks are. I'll put this washer in here and I'm actually going to turn this blank to that diameter. I'll turn it to this diameter down here, this diameter up here. And you'll see why in a minute. I call this my modified slim line. Give me a smaller tool wrist. You can see it's a smaller tool wrist. 
so I can get in there to it. about 1240 RPMs. Blowing a few chunks out. Stabilized makes it harder. around with a small gab. <clears throat> Bigger's always better. <laughs> so we're going. Sharp tool. Let's go. This stabilized marble wood is hard. Not only is it hard because it's stabilized, it's cross grain, and cross grain is always tricky. So I'm using the skew like a negative rake scraper. No chips. Still got some tear out there. Let's see what we can do. It's been my experience, regardless of what kind of blank you're dealing with, pretty much to take the corners down first. After you get it somewhat round, I should have started making that round a little sooner. I've got some chips I'm going to have to deal with, but we'll see. I didn't really intend to start this <laughs> little pin turning episode with a such a challenging blank, but I guess I'm glad I did. Gives you an idea of what you might run across and what you can do to take care of it. something. It doesn't matter if it's a pin or a spindle or a bow. If the tool starts having a hard time cutting, you lost your edge. Go sharpen it, let the tool do the work. You can see the difference in the kind of shavings I'm getting now too.
on the bushing. Raise it up just a little and start to cut. That'll ensure after I sand it's nice and flush. Okay, now we'll do the other blank, looking for my marks. There's my center. Got a slightly bigger washer installed on this end over here. Hopefully I'll be able to avoid any more tear out than that. Knocking those edges down on a sander might have been a good idea. I didn't realize this was going to be this tough. But it'll be all right. I've still got some rough spots up here where there was some chip out. That's what's causing the bouncing. When I get down here, it's all nice and smooth. But the chip out's going away. See what the damage looks like. One little spot right there. The rest of it looks pretty good. Let me home. of this upper barrel. Gotta check it every now and then make sure I'm not generating too much heat because heat will make this crack. I think I like that shape. Got two little rough spots right there that I'm going to hit with super glue before I start sanding. Give that a while to cure and I'll be back. I hope you find it useful. If you did, come back and we'll finish it out in 5C. So thanks again for watching. 
I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you've liked anything you've seen. And come back and see us.